I couldn't get myself in the right position. Everything was wet. So he took off so fast. I want to get him in my scope. Mm -hmm. But I, try, I just got to hold it steady. John and Jamie were, don't you worry about a thing, kid. I wouldn't have taken, I don't know if I would have taken that shot either. It was too, it was too split second. And, and Bob, uh, you know, grandfather Bob puts his arm around me and says, don't worry about it, kid. We're going to get another shot. First step is uh, all of us have been there. That's the first step. We've all been through that spot where uh, you can't get lined up on an animal, you're not comfortable, you're not ready for the shot, you can't find it, you know, it's all, we've all been through that. So uh, that was nothing uh, out of the ordinary, you know, so to speak. So, uh, but John very patiently coached her through it, took her through every step by step. And, and you know, when you're in that spot, you need, uh, you need to know it's okay. And you just need to feel like, hey, this is all right. Tagging along behind Dad was great, and it was just a, the best of all worlds. The lifestyle was wonderful. All of Dad's friends were outdoorsmen. You know, I, I don't think he knew anybody that wasn't an outdoorsman. It was just the way it was in the 1950s. You know. it, it became part of me. The business, you know, I, I wanted to become part of it, but I have to say in all truth, it became part of me. Uh, it just grew into me, and I, this is something that I wanted to do from the time I was old enough to really start understanding. You know, you, every kid goes through that phase where you're, you're uh, a little undecided about what you're going to do. But when I got out of the Navy uh, in 1970, uh, I knew what I wanted to do. We named it the, the Model 48 uh, because 1948 was the year that my dad founded the company. So we thought it appropriate that uh, uh, we have a rifle named the Model 48. Our rifles have had 60 years in the development. And you'd say, well, gosh, Bob, how'd you get there? Because uh, you weren't making guns. Well, actually we were. Uh, when you're in the bullet business, you got to test your bullets. And the way you test your bullets is you got to get a rifle. And, and pretty soon you start saying, you know, I'm start making them because it's, it's a little more cost effective. So we've been doing barreled actions for years and years and years. And uh, when we've put some stocks on some of them. So uh, the Model 48 has a pretty rich heritage. It's, it's not a newcomer like some folks might think. It's been around for a while just in a different form. Oh, I see them. I see them. Right there. What is this right here, honey? Oh my god, yeah. Okay, his butt. I got his butt. I got him. I got him. Hold on, nice and steady. Somebody's right beside him now. I still got his. I still got his butt in my scope. No, I still got him. I can't shoot him right now, can I? Put the safety back on. Where are they? Oh, I see them. I see them. 
big right there. This one right there, yeah. You got your cross here, John? I'm breathing too much and I'm moving. My husband, John, kept on saying, don't worry about it, honey, you know, take your time, take your time, take a couple deep breaths, because we just got done crawling, basically, up this mountain. I was breathing so fast that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. The stags were around us, and we could see them. It was the, the, the distance from them to us that we had to try to make a lot shorter. Now the sun's out. Yeah, and it's gorgeous. And now it's gorgeous. And yeah. I'm too hot. This just this is one of those great times. We had a little snow. We had a little sleet. We had a little wind. We had a little sunshine. Uh, you know, the four seasons plus wind uh, in in one day. It was pretty exciting. Oh, well, we've got a pretty good stag just around the corner here, just over the top of this little ridge. So we're gonna sneak up there, see if he's still hanging around. Part I think that held them in there was the early weather in the morning. I think that kind of kept them, they, they were looking for a sheltered area and that was kind of the spot, so. If he is, it's probably gonna happen pretty fast. So we'll be running and gunning about as quick as we can, I think. Beautiful country. Well, we were gonna try to sneak uh, over as, as close as we could get to the animals. Uh, and hopefully, our, our hope was we could crest the ridge, uh, crest that big finger up there and, and be at the same elevation, be right where they were and be able to, to uh, get some good shots. Bob had been looking through the spotting scope and said there was one there that he definitely wanted because it had this drop time that was pretty unusual and he had nice mass, but I did tell Bob that if we saw a stag that he wanted, I wanted him to pull the trigger first. I wanted him to have the first dibs on it. John, my John Andre said, you know, there's another red stag there that Anita could take if we got her close enough. We had this just very, very long point that came out. It was just uh, huge. I think we all kind of knew that it was gonna break. Uh, that's part of the trophy. If, if you can find something that is unique and different and something that, that's a conversation piece, uh, that's the animal you want. At least it's the animal I want. So that was first in my mind uh, when we lined up for the shot. You guys ready? The problem was gonna be is that he was gonna have to take the shot first. Not to mention it was gonna be a 10 second moment. Are you ready? There you go, firing. Well, that's those nozzlers for you again. Did not move an inch. Stone dead. That's the AccuBond advantage here. When he was shot, he just went straight down. We call it Thor's hammer because it hits very hard. Rob Dunham from the Magnum Hunt Club. Here's an important message that every hunter needs to hear. When we're out enjoying our right to hunt, it's easy to forget about what's happening in Washington, D.C. But just because you're not thinking about the politicians doesn't mean they're not thinking about you. They are always up to something. And if you're not happy with what they're up to, please listen to this message from my friend Chuck Norris.